it's been a hell of a season guys we've been through ups we've been through downs a lot more ups than downs as you guys can you know you guys have seen through the season but you know some questionable moments this upa season has really sparked some life into me regarding draft i took a hiatus a little before upa like a month of hiatus but i really needed one and this has just been very helpful and now being in the finals is just very awesome to add on top of this welcome to the channel i am galate 74 and if you are unaware bringing you upa of finals today very excited for this in today's battle we will be facing off against jay coach of the atlanta victinis a little bit of backstory he was my first wi-fi opponent in generation 8 because we have done some gen 7 wi-fi not too much but enough and in Gen 8, it's a whole new system because of land and stuff, and he was our first opponent in UPA. And now to end off the season, he is the final fight, aka the final boss of UPA, we're going to call it for today. But please go make sure to go check out his channel in the description below. Go show him some love. He's a fantastic content creator, and I've been enjoying his videos a lot. He's got a lot of energy in his videos compared to mine but i'm trying to keep the energy a little bit up in this one because i'm trying to be a little bit more laid back but hey it's finals we can be a little bit hype about it this is going to be a little bit of a longer portion because a it's finals so regardless of what happens there will be an ending portion or about you know the whole season in general the team builder is going to be a little bit a little bit longer and as i keep rambling on this introduction gets longer <laughs> so everything's just a little bit longer but it's okay there was a timestamp earlier so if you're not listening to this intro you're probably already at the battle but that's enough of that uh we can just jump into it shall we i'm gonna do what i do in every team builder list off his team first jay's team consists of g max rillaboom tapu lele victini Mandibuzz, Araquanid, Noivern, Garbodor, Jolteon, Palisand, Sock, and Kling Clang. Now, I haven't really been saying what I've been expecting out of my opponents, just because I like to keep it to myself, but I'll say it here. What I fully expect is going to be G-Max, Drillaboom, Tapu Lele, Victini, Noivern. Those four, I think, are must-brings. And then the last two are kind of up in the air. I'm thinking, like, Mandibuzz, Palisand. That's what he brought last time. Uh, I could see Jolteon being thrown in the mix because he's been bringing screens Jolteon. Socks not that bad against my team, stuff like that, and then maybe Arachnid. Webs could be annoying, but that's kind of it. But looking at his team, I do have some notes here written down and things I'm worried about. Scarf Tapu Lele, that late game is very scary if I do not deal with it accordingly. I have one good defensive answer to it and not many good offensive answers. Granite locking into a move, I mean Psychic's really spammable against my team, something I do have to look out for. Noivern, very hard to switch into. I do have some good 1v1 potential on my team for it, but having to switch into it and take a hit, very hard. Noivern has very good coverage, particularly the dragon flying and fire coverage is just so good against my team. And the spoilers, Comfey's not coming, so can't really use that as a switch in. Rillaboom, uh, A, it's a G-Max Rillaboom, always scary. Uh, there's not one set that really runs through my team, but there is a set for every scenario, right? So I have to really figure out what moves Rillaboom is packing, uh, what item it's going to have, because it's going to be probably like Weakness Policy, Lumberry, or... Um, well, those are the two big ones, honestly. I don't really expect any other item. Maybe Boots, but kind of doubt it. And yeah, that's kind of the three big things I'm scared of. Uh, Palisand could bring rocks, could be annoying. Arachnid, same with webs. Though those Pokemon particularly don't have the greatest matchups, just, you know, the hazard form of it could be annoying. And I can tell you guys my game plan here. I have a very set in stone plan that I spent a lot of time working on. Uh, Shoutouts to Marcus, Zane, and Aqua for helping me sort of put this team, or help me mock, and I asked Aqua for just, you know, their opinion on a few things, and it kind of helped. But the game plan here is to leave the Frostlass, try and scout and potentially 1v1 things, see who's Scarf, blah blah blah. Next, use Rotom Wash and Dragolish to pivot around. This might force out Rillaboom and to force it to Dynamax, and the early, it, earlier it does, the better for me. Then, just try and set up a Charizard and win. I also have a Scarf Stone Journer in the back, so that could be very helpful as well. And yeah, I kind of just told you all six mods I'm bringing, but I'll read list them real quick. I am bringing a Stone Journer, 
Ferrothorn, Dragalge, G Magazard, Rotom Wash, and Frostlass. Alright, so we can start talking about my team now. First off is going to be Stone Jorner. We're bringing Stone Jorner to a freaking finals game. Like, that's already hype enough. <laughs> um, this is max speed, max attack, a jolly nature with a choice scarf. Moves being rocks, stone edge, earthquake, and heavy slam. Scarf Stone Edge is amazing against my opponent. He's got three resists, and they're all his lower tiers. Palisand, Sock, and Clink Clang. And I only expect one of those to come at most. So if that thing is removed, then Stone Journal late game has a field day, just clicking Stone Edge and having a good old time. I do have rocks just in case I do not go the Stone Journal route end game and want to get up hazards, because hazard control is going to be pretty nice in this game. So I, at least I have the option there. I have absolute max speed, so I can outspeed Jolteon. This uh, screen's Jolteon says I'm bringing is very annoying, so if I can just outspeed it and outright kill it, that'd be very nice. And this does provide me a little bit of defensive utility. I was thinking between Stone Journer and Crook, but A, Stone Journer for the culture, and B, though Crook gives me a little bit more defensive utility, Stone Edge from Stone Journer is so much better than EQ or knockoff from Crook, like so much better. So I decided for that route, uh, but I can still take physical Victini hits, so that's something. And then finally, I have Heavy Slam for Lele. It was that, or Heat Crash for Rillaboom, but Heat Crash doesn't work on uh, Dynamax Mons, so, you know, Heavy Slam was the route I went in the end. Stone Jr. coming to a finals game. Very excited. Next is Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn, as it comes to, like, every game, is max HP, 204 spit F with the Sassy Nature, and the rest in defense. Holding the leftovers, moves being Leech Seed, Iron Defense, Gyro Ball, and Body Press. Now, this is my main Tapu Lele answer, though that's not all tier 4. It can check some of his defensive mons, like the Raquinid, the Mandibuzz, for example. Palosand, lightly, though I don't have a grass move, so probably not. Uh, Rillaboom, I can 1v1, though I would prefer not to do that, because I have other answers to Rillaboom, like Dragals and Charizard, for example. But if I have to do it, I have Iron Defense Body Press, particularly for that set. Uh, I can potentially help stall out the screen's Jolteon that I keep mentioning, just because that is decent against my team. But um, with Iron Defense Leech Seed and just switching around, I can stall it out fine. And as I mentioned, just kind of be his walls down. And Ferrothorn, just pretty nice, old, reliable Pokemon in this game. And that's going to be the set. Our third Pokemon is one we did not bring week one against him, and it is Dragalge. This is 244 HP, 100 defense, 140 attack, and then 12 in spit F and speed. Modest nature with the Pyapa Berry. Moves being Draco Meteor, Sludge Bomb, Toxic Spikes, and Protect. Now this was a big set. Like I went back and forth with this one for the longest time. This was the final set I finalized. This was initially going to be my lead over False Last, but thanks to my mock with Zane and with Marcus later, I found that going for False Last was a little bit better because Dragalge his defensive utility is really good. I can help stall out G-Max Rillaboom's uh, Dynamax turns, unless it's got Max Quake, then I don't really do it as well. Still a thing. T-Spikes are amazing. I don't think Garbodor's coming, and the way his removal, the way he's been doing it, is that he's got two Defoggers, Mandibuzz and Noivern. If one comes, it always has, de it always has Defog. What I'm thinking is that Noivern is really good against me offensively, so that's why I kind of do expect Mana Buzz to be the defogger of the team. And if Mana Buzz doesn't come, T-Spikes are very good. And then just to add up on top of all that, he has no Sludge Bomb switching. Uh, Palisand, sure, but then it just drops to a Draco. So really, really nice tech. And this set, I really think is going to put in a lot of work. Payapa is to bait the Victini into Lele, into clicking a Psychic move, and then me just killing him. So lots of different things, ways I can use this set, but it... It was a very calculated set, and I think it's going to work out very well in this game. Fourth is going to be our G-Max Zard. This is max speed, jolly nature, 220 attack, 28 HP, and, you know, defense but death. Moves being a Swords Dance, Flare Blitz, Dual Wing Beat, Earthquake with the Weakness Policy. I was Weakness Policy last time. I am it again. Uh, there's a few things on their team that can proc it. Jolteon, Bolt Strike Victini is what I'm really looking at. Araquanid, Stone Edge Palisand, if that's a thing. Definitely some things... Uh, I do have Flare Blitz as just a mid-ground coverage move, because I don't really need Flare Blitz, but it still hits really strong. And then this is mainly here, because I can always Revenge Rilla Boom if it's not Dynamaxed with Charizard, like no matter what. So that I found that very helpful. If Rillaboom's not boosted, I can always Swords Dance in front of it. 
So lots of potential there. Again, that's why I really want my opponent to be Dynamaxing early, so I can take advantage of that. But that is going to be our Charizard set. Definitely gonna like you know use it more towards mid game. Next is going to be Rotom Wash. This is max HP, max speed with the Timid Nature, and then holding the Rindo Berry. Moves being Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Will O Wisp, and Defog. It is a standard pivot set. I have not really deviated from it too much, and this is just no different. I am absolute max speed, so I can outspeed Rillaboom and Sock, and I can burn them or aggressively pivot depending on how I'm feeling, or if like, let's say Rillaboom might be Lumberry, do I want to risk Will O Wisp early? I could just Volt Switch. And I have Rindo Berry just in case they Grassy Glide, so that's fine there. Uh, but this is mainly here just the pivot and just burn things. Uh, very important is the fact that this has Defog. Uh, if Araquanid and or Palisand come, Rotom can Defog in front of them, Volt Switch or Hydro Pump around respectively, and just have a good time and make sure hazards are never a big deal against my team. So that was like the main key reasoning that Rotom had a good matchup here, so I can Defog. That's Rotom, and then finally we have Frostlass as the final Pokemon this week. Max Special Attack, 180 speed with a Tim in Nature, 76 in HP. Holding the Focus Sash, moves being Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Will-O-Wisp, and Destiny Bond. This outspeeds Max Speed Victini. This is my dedicated lead that I decided to, you know, hold on to in the end. We saw it happen last time if you watched my last battle. Frostlass demolished him, so I am like... 500% sure that he's going to bring some good countermeasure or some neat tech that might be able to counter Frostlass, particularly like a, like the physical set. That's why I went special. Uh, special does let me beat a bulk up Rillaboom, though if Frostlass is going to die early, then it won't really be around for that. But this is just the main, like mainly scout for like scarves, uh, see what they, you know, learn from information basically as a lead while doing some decent damage. Best case scenario, I 1v1 while learning other information as well. So that is our Frostlass set. This is going to be our finals team. I am very excited for this. I feel like our matchup is pretty good, though Victini, Lele, Frillaboom is just very scary. So we'll see how it's going to go. If you are hyped for this as much as I am, make sure you leave a like. And without further ado, everybody, here we're going to go into our finals game. All right, good luck, have fun to my opponent, Jay. This is Finals, and as I do for every single game, including Finals, I will be crossing out notes here. Uh, there is, oh, it's just his top six. He brought Arachnid, which is a little bit annoying for what I wanted to do, but otherwise, this is kind of what I expected here. Um, okay, this isn't that bad. Yeah, Arachnid does make my life a little bit harder, I'm not gonna lie, because I wasn't really expecting it to come. But again, it's, it's okay. Just crossing out some notes here as I always do. I wanted to leave Frostlass, and I'm probably still going to do it. I don't like it as much now because of the Araquanid that's here. Because it makes my life a little bit harder. As I keep mentioning over and over again. But I still think I'm going to do it because it really just beats every other lead. And I can deal with webs in this game because Charizard does look amazing here. I don't have to worry about rocks at all. And then Stone Jr. also looks amazing. Though again, if it is like webs are up, then it makes it hard but still frost last lead as I wanted to do from the beginning and once again good luck have fun to Jay I have been in this rodeo before but it just gives me the nerves every single time whoo all right here we go and I think I got all the notes I needed besides I can get rid of the leads so we'll see what he wants to lead off with in this game here as we're going to see that is going to be the Victini. All right, that's fine. I click Shadow Ball. I want to see if this thing is Scarf. If it's not, I two code every time. And that's what we're going to do. I, I assume a Rackman is going to come out because I'm special. As they do, just switch out. Yeah. As yeah, that comes out. I'm a little annoyed that Rack a Rackman can't get burnt. Otherwise, I'd be really cool with the situation here. Uh, we can find out about this Rackman set. That took nothing. I know this thing's really bulky, like Spadef, but it's supposed to do 24. That did not do 24 min, so this might be Assault Vest, or it's very Spadef. Anyway, I, what I might do here... Hmm. I kind of want to go on to Dragalge and click T-Spikes. 
Well, no, because if they have webs... It's already a tough situation. I didn't really want to be in this spot, but I think... I mean, this is the spot we're in anyway. Uh, I'm gonna go into Dragalj. I didn't want to use Dragalj a little bit early like this, but it's fine. I'm gonna get T-Spike up, because this might be Assault Vest. Uh, we'll find out in a second, as I Scald, so that might prove my theory right. That is a little bit more than I would like it to. And because I think they are, I think T-Spike's the play. This could be a throw if they're not AV and they are the Sticky Web variant, because I'm just going to defog my own Spike away. But if they are Assault Vest, then this is a great trade for me, getting T-Spikes up. Because though they do have removal, forcing that to remove at some point is really good for me. And T-Spikes hit everything grounded. Can find out whose boots, stuff like that. Again, this might not be AV, and I'm faster than it, which is nice. It just could be very, very spadef, as it's Mirror Coat, so that actually is proving to be... This is definitely an AV set. Okay, so T-Spikes was definitely the right play there. I think what I do now is go out into the Ferrothorn, and then Leech Seed. I don't think you go Victini here. Uh, I could be weakening Ferrothorn for the Lele in the back, but that's fine. They would actually withdraw. Is they're going to go out into NASCAR. Okay. That's cool with me. Uh, I'm going to force this thing to defog, probably. Uh, what's... I could just go back out in the Frostlass. And a part of me wants to do that. Uh, I think I will. Mm. Frostlass or, like... I'm actually, you know, I'm gonna leech you first. No, I'm gonna go in the frost last. I'm not really scared of the Iraqinid yet. I know that this thing is that thing is AV probably, so I don't have to worry about webs in this game, which is really, really nice. He goes for Heat Wave, which okay, that's fine with me. It does not defog the T spikes away, which is really good for me. And what I can do is just Ice Beam, I think. I could Destiny Bond, but if they switch out, then it kind of just sucks. And Ice Beam still does good damage to this anyway. As they're just going to tank it. Okay. So that's fine. Does a Chunker. As they Defog. Okay. So I'm down to... Ninety-three. If I burn it, I should be able to live. But if they go out onto a then it's not a good time. So what I'm going to do is just ice beam again, and you know it's chip on a so that's fine. I feel like they're going to go out onto it, as they actually don't. So this is fine. Chipping this down is really good for me. They could try and roost stall, as they're going to do. Uh, not really a big deal. Uh, they are risking the, uh, the F word, so that's cool. I just, I'm scared to file off a will o -Wisp because um, Iraq when it just comes in for free, though Ice Beam kind of just gives it a free switch in anyway. I'm going to will o -Wisp. So we'll see what they want to do. As they do switch out this time, so probably going back out into Iraq when it, yeah. So misplay there. Uh, not, again, not, not like Ice Beam was going to do a crazy ton, but I'm cool with that. I think what I want to do here is Destiny Bond. Um, that's what I'm going to do. If they kill me, then I get the trade-off, which is just amazing. Let's see it. Let's see what they want to do. They go for Scald. Uh, this might not knock me out, which would be a little bit unfortunate. As it barely doesn't. Um, okay, so that, that does suck. That actually does really suck. And, um... I think I just Shadow Ball... Yeah, I'm just going to Shadow Ball into this thing. Yeah, okay. A little unfortunate. I kind of wish they had clicked Liquidation there. So I'm going to lose my Frost Last, but I will get some nice chip on this in return. Uh, meaning, like, barely any. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Frost Last drops, and we do get the... There's the first KO of the game. I can go uh, into the 
stone joiner and just get a stone edge kill or at least get a lot of damage off with it and i think that's what i'm gonna do so we'll go on the stone joiner here and click the stone edge button real boom's two code and forcing that thing to come out would be amazing yeah i wouldn't be shocked if they just kind of sack this off to be honest So not the greatest early game I wanted, like I'm not really happy, but we do, uh, this should KO, right? Yeah, that KOs. Okay, so Rackman dies. Not the greatest start I wanted, but it does, like, I did learn a bit, which is kind of what I want, went for. Now Manibos has Heat Wave, that's a really interesting bring. Rackman drops, which is nice. I, I do expect kind of Stone Journey to come out here. Not Stone Journey, what, Rillaboom? My bad. <laughs> As that is real boom. This thing's scary. What I can do is either go out into Dragalge. I think Dragalge is always the play here. Save this 100%. And go out into this. Yeah. I'm not crazy scared of this thing, but I am probably going to lose a Pokemon to it, which, you know, is fine. I kind of hope they Dynamax right away, but I really doubt they do that. I know Jay and the way he battles, and he's just definitely not going to here. But Snow Journey is a really good endgame now, because there's no webs. So, yeah. Uh, we switch out. We'll go out into our Dragalge here. Kind of wish I was Shuka in this scenario, but I have Piapa, which is fine. There's Swords Dance. Okay, I did kind of expect this set to come, though it is a very scary set still. As a max airstream will knock me out. I kind of want to protect. If they sword dance again, that's a really big issue, though. No way you sword dance again, though. Like that's such a weird play. It's, it's it, I think it's a weird play if you sword dance again here. I think I just protect. And if they sword dance, then that's very good play on Jay's part. I'm gonna yeah okay. So we do make the right play here. We're going to stall out at least two turns of Dynamax here, which is what I wanted. And yeah, so this thing's going to get big. Probably going to go for an Airstream. Uh, I would prefer them. To, I would prefer to see Quake. But um, yeah, we'll just see what they want to do here. As we protect to stall out a turn of the Gigantamax here. As they're going to go for the Airstream. Okay, so yeah. I don't think I'm going to live another one of those outside of Protect. Maybe, but I kind of doubt it. It's not... Wait, what item are you? Did you show an item? No, you didn't show an item. You're not Life Orb. You're probably... You're either Policy or Lumberry. Yeah, there's no world where I should live this next one. If I do, though, T-Spike or Sludge Bomb, probably... I don't want to proc a policy, so I'm going to let me let me do a quick count here. I have time. I want to see if Real Boom dies to a G Max uh, Charizard hit. Yeah, it should always die. I'm gonna T Spike and see what they want to do. They're gonna knuckle. Uh, that's really good for me because I can get a T Spike up, forcing them to have the defog later. And I can actually just stall out the entire entirety of this, which is actually amazing. And what I'm going to do is just click protect, I think. Yeah. It's pretty predictable, but it's fine. I think I should I should live this with the protect up. So, uh, they're gonna go for the airstream. That's a smart play. And now I can sludge bomb it, because I know it will die. I'm cool with trading Dragals for this full thing's G-Max. Like, that is very good for me. And I get a T-Spike out of it as well. And now I just Sludge Bomb. So, yeah, that's going to be our play. No other thing to think about it. No, I shouldn't have to think about it. Jeez. Uh, they should just knock me out with, like, Acrobatics. Yeah. So, yep. Down goes Dragals. And now I can just go into Charizard. 
which is exactly what I'm going to do. The grass disappears, which is really nice. As much as, I mean, I'm going on Charizard anyway. As much as I would love the Swords Dance on this thing, which I wanted to do, uh, I can't do it because it is boosted to plus three, and I'm not going to be living plus three hits from this thing. So, I always Dynamax here. I think I just Airstream. Does Airstream kill? That's the question. It should kill. I live one. Hit. I should live any one hit anyway when I'm Dynamax, so it's not really a problem. The fact that I'm not boosted might suck because um, Noivern's gonna be able to live a hit. Same with Mana Buzz. Well, Mana Buzz is chipped, so maybe not. And I can Swords Dance on the Mana Buzz. So they actually do withdraw. Oh man, if I Swords Dance there, I probably just won the game. Uh, they go under Noivern now. Okay, they're gonna find my weakness policy. I'm cool with that. Uh, I'm fine with this. This does mean that I'm gonna have to save Charizard for endgame, unless I get an Iron Defense up with Ferrothorn. So. But no, I'm cool with this. I get an Airstream off, and I'm gonna get two Airstreams off, honestly. And I can still sort now, I can sort the dance in front of that Rillaboom. So we Airstream. That should be a 2 co. Yep, it's a 2 co. Nice. Uh, raise my speed, so it should be faster, unless they're Scarf, which, I mean, if they're Scarf, that's fine. I, I just Airstream again. They don't have a switch in. As, yeah, there's no everyone's gonna drop. This thing was really threatening to my team, so I'm glad that they just kind of gave me that. That's gone. Noivern. Let's see what they want to go as. They go on the mana buzz. That's fine with me. I'm actually just going to G Max Wildfire now. Seems to be the right play. And I can Swords Dance the next turn if they don't, depending on what they show here. And if they don't defog again, T specs are up, so that's really nice for me. The only problem with them saving again, with them saving Rillaboom, I'm gonna probably have to save the Charizard for later. I wanna see this. I don't think this is gonna kill. But I mean we'll find out together. They could put they could pull like a double in the Victini, but I don't think that's that doesn't really help them. As they're just gonna take this G-Max Wildfire. Will they live? They do, but they'll die to the wildfire unless they roost. That was a crit? Oh my god, I'm sorry. That actually really sucks. As they roost, okay. Um, this is very fizz death then. Okay, so what do I do in this situation? That is very fizz death. That was a crit, and it just did that much. I think at least. Let me, let me, let me count first. Um... Well, it's because I wasn't boosted. Uh, let me see here now. If I'm boosted the plus two and they roost and they take the G Max, they'll be at like 80 ish percent. Yeah, they just don't take anything. I could just go on the Stone Joiner. That does work. I might just go Rotom, honestly. I don't think Swords Dancing now is the play just because this thing can kind of just beat me. You know what? No, they, they need to. They, they, they won't. They're, I'm going to Swords Dance. If they attack me with like foul play, foul, foul, foul play is what I'm really scared of, then re really good play. But I just don't think you foul play here. When you could defog to get rid of the T-Spikes, you can roost to get your health back, yeah. You have defog, roost, heat wave. I wonder what that last move is going to be. So that's, that's some damage there. How many turns of wildfire do I have? I have two more. I think I just flood blitz this turn. Let's see how much damage I can do here. I really don't feel like they have foul play. I really don't. Knockoff's not a big deal here. Let's see how much this does. That does so much. Uh, if they don't roost, the wildfire kills them. They knock off. Let's go. Okay, that's really good. Uh, that die. That dies the wildfire. Let's see. 
That's gone. Mana buzz gone. That's really big. I'm faster than everything. This is a really good scenario, though. Oh, we'll see. A plus two. Who they go out into? Let's see who they go out into. That crit sucks, though, on the mana buzz. That might end up mattering a lot. Um, let's see. I just want to see what they got onto before I make a move. Uh, top of the lane, how much are you taking from attacks? Okay. Yeah, let's just let's just see what they gotta do. I should get another kill here. That's basically all I'm learning. That's they go into the uh, Victini. Okay. This has a chance to live. A small chance. Well, not with T spikes. I'll die to a T spike if you know. Uh, who do I have in the back for a boom? Um. Okay. I earthquake. I'm faster than this guaranteed because I'm a plus two. They they always die. It, earthquake into the T spike will always kill this. I hope earthquake just roll out kills it. It's a roll in my favor if it's got no bulk. I think, like heavy in my favor, but we'll see. We earthquake. Will this kill? It does not kill. And the T spike kill? Yeah, the T spike should kill, right? Uh, they psychic. I think I just die here. As yeah, I die. But does Victini die? The answer is yes, Victini dies. Okay, good. So at this point, I can still lose this to Drain Punch. They showed they had that grass move, airstream, and they have knuckle. Yeah, they do have knuckle. Um, I can't go Rotom here. Not a good play. I really want to go Ferrothorn, and I kind of want to go Stone Deerner too. Reasoning being, let's see, Rollaboom. But well, they can't speed boost, so I go Ferrothorn. And um, we'll see what they got. They go onto this, yeah. Ferrothorn. They're not life orb. Do they get poisoned? I didn't see. Kind of hope they do. It just makes my life easier. They don't, so they're boots. Okay. I want an iron defense here. Um, I'm still scared I could lose to um, Scarf or whatever in the back. I just iron defense though. They're probably just drain. They sword dance, yeah. So, all right, that's fine. Still a scary situation, but it's fine. We iron defense. Um, I think I just iron defense again. Do I one shot this thing at plus six? I should. Or it'll be close. So I just click it again. They drain punch, yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. It's cool with me. I take iron barbs chip. I'm plus four now. And they drain punch again, not. I get a lot of recovery back with leftovers plus uh, the grassy terrain, which is pretty nice. Do I iron defense again? I mean, if I get damage on this, it's really nice. How many turns of terrain do we got left? Three. Okay. Um. I think damage on this is just really nice. Yeah, we body press. Uh, 
Um, so yeah. I'm just so scared of, uh, if he puts me in range of Scarf lately. Though, it has to lock in the Focus Blast if I stay healthy enough on Ferrothorn. They Drain Punch, okay. I Body Press here. It should do over half to this Ferrothorn. And yeah, we'll see. Oh my god, that does so much. Okay, yeah, that did a lot of damage. <laughs> Jeez. Ooh, that was a burp. And I think I just body press again, right? At this point, that's that's my only play. So yeah, I body press and then I into the gyro ball, I think. Yeah, because they're not in scarf is sh that should never be in range of um, scarf psychic never kills. Yeah, this dies, and if it specs, I always kill it with stone Jorner. Ooh, this is a close one. I mean, Scarf Focus Blast could still do it. What am I at? I'm at 77. Yeah, that's a lot of health. Jeez. Let's see it. They do get Toxic Spikes, so they're not boots. Psychic Surge goes off. Okay, and we Gyro Ball. We'll see if they lock in. They do click Focus Blast. They do hit. This should knock me out. Okay. They're poisoned. Let me make sure Stone Journer kills. Yeah, it kills every time. I just need this to not be Scarf. If this is Scarf, it probably wins. I just go Stone Jr., yeah, and find out. And Rotom might be able to still beat this thing anyway. Because, again, it has to be Scarf to have a chance here. I Heavy Slam. We'll see how much it does. Well, it kills. We'll see if you're a Scarf, Lele. We will find out here. Um, they're not Scarf. We click Heavy Slam. This kill KOs Tabu Lele every time. Oh my goodness. Your Calgary Flamethrowers are UPA Season 1 champions. Oh my god. I actually thought that thing was Scarf, not gonna lie. I really thought it was. Wow. What a game that was. Oh my goodness. I I don't know what to say. Um, GD to J, first of all. Thank you for the battle so much. Uh, just That's first off. You know, respect to my opponent. Awesome battler. Um, make sure to go check out his channel. It will be linked in the description below. I am so happy right now. I can't describe to you guys because um, I've had a history of not playing well in finals games and I felt like I played well there. Like, I really did. And we had a game plan. We stuck to it and it worked. Uh, it could have been scary at the end. Rotom Watch does live to Focus Blast though, I believe. So with the Toxic Spikes, I should be able to chip it down. Plus it can miss. So there's that. But, you know, mad respect to my opponent again, Jay. I am going to have a, another section at the end of this um, video here just to wrap up my season. I do it at the end of every season I have because just to, you know, recap the team, have a recap, just so I don't have to, like, make an extra video about it. I'll re-record that, and I'll record that a little bit later. But I, I want to thank everybody who's been watching this UPA run so much. Uh, the support has been insane for this Wi-Fi run because, again, I took a little hiatus before I joined this league. And this league really kind of got me back into it, especially because it was probably on land, Wi-Fi, a new atmosphere, and I've been quite enjoying it a lot. But thank you to JB, Shay, and everybody else, Dorian, running at UPA and giving me the chance to be in this league. And yeah, we're the inaugural champions. That's so hype. Um, that's all I have to say. If I have any more ending remarks, I'm going to add them to the end at the, um, the ending remarks part portion. So yeah, thank you for watching the battle. If you are here from the battle portion of the finals, this is where it concludes. Now to finish off the UPA season, I will run through my team and just talk about it and just give some, some final thoughts. On screen, you'll probably see stats. I'm not exactly sure what you'll see, but it will be relevant to what we are talking about here. 
Most of the things I do record have a loose script, nothing hard, but like something I have a general idea of what I'm talking about. But for this next part, it won't have that. So I do tend to ramble. I'll try to not do it too much, but I can't guarantee anything. But without further ado, we are at UPA Season 1 Champions. I'm still hyped about it. I'm recording it hours and hours later after the battle, and I'm still just very ecstatic about it. We are finished off the regular season with a 10-2 record, plus 20 differential. This actually snagged us first place in the league, and believe it or not, this is the first time in my entire draft career I finished first place in the regular season. It's crazy because I make playoffs in every league I'm in besides like PBA season four, but that season sucked. And but I never get first. It's always like somewhere in the playoffs run, but never first. So this was a really big accomplishment for me for that to happen. I will list off the team that I had. I did not make any transactions. So we did have the same team throughout the regular season. We had G-Max Charizard, Ferrothorn, Crocodile, Rotom Wash, Dragalge, Frostlass, Comfey, Sigalith, Cinchino, Throw, and Stone Chorner. Now, I'm going to try and break this down as much as I can. Again, I didn't really write anything down prior. Um, things I really liked about this team, things that were in the middle, and things I didn't like. There weren't many things I didn't like. I like this team a lot. This has to be one of my favorite teams I've ever used. Definitely top three, maybe the best. But we're starting to talk about things I like. Uh, Ferrothorn, Rotom Wash. This defensive core is nuts. I personally think for balance, for the way I battle, like offensive balance I like to call it, this defensive core is probably one of the best that I can run. Uh, just the synergy between the two are insane and being able to pair well with a bunch of offensive options as my team has made life building so much easier. That was one of the big shining moments about this team is just how reliable that defensive core was. Another big shining moment which I guess leads to sort of kind of ties in with the defensive portion is throw. Throw is my low tier fighting that I picked up and it was amazing. I picked it up because it was either throw or sock, and I felt like my team needed a little bit more defense. So I just went throw as, you know, a niche fighting type pick that I could have a few times. And boy, this thing is amazing. It came to 6 out of the 12 regular season games. It could have came to more though. I do want to not stress enough that this was 7th Mon on a lot of builds. So the fact that a tier 4 throw of all things, like you don't, when you think of low tier fightings, there's a lot of things. You know, the Hitmons are down there, Sock as I just mentioned. Pangoro is a great low tier fighting. Scrafty, you don't really think about throw too much, but this thing has insane bulk. It's kind of nuts. Lots of good coverage. It could even run Gus Flame Orb, though I didn't do that. And it was a really good mon to have, a really clutch to have in prep as well. This team had a lot of good offensive options as well. I'll get the Zard at the end, I'll talk about that. Uh, one thing that kind of sucks, I love Dragalish on this team, I really do. It kind of sucks I wasn't really able to run specs or just full offense because, again, I had a lot of options and, you know, good steel types kind of shut it down. I say that lightly, but, you know, why run that when you can run something like, you know, the Crook, which was amazing in this team, or the Charizard, stuff like that. Speaking of Crook, most kills on my team, 13. Kind of shocking because you don't really notice it at first and then next thing you know, Crook's got 13 kills and it's like, whoa, where did this happen? By the way, we didn't have a single Mon in the top 10 for kills of the season, which it's kind of funny, but you know, the kills were pretty much spread across the board here, to be honest. Um, other things I really liked about this team, Comfe, uh, very good addition to the team. I wanted like a Romatisse initially for budgeting. That didn't work out because I got sniped the Buzzwole, but honestly, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because Comfe fit this team so much better than Romatisse. Really glad I had it. It didn't come to like every game, but when it came, it did work. Uh, I already talked about throw. The defensive core is good. Frostlass was very good to have as well. The dynamic between Frostlass and Chinchino was a little annoying, but it actually wasn't unbearable. Like there were some weeks where I could see Cinchino over Frostlass or you know whatever, and obviously Cinchino came three times and you know it did okay. Finally, our tier five, our Stone Joiner. I was gonna like kind of mess around with this pick, but seeing that it actually gave me some value to the team, I decided to actually go a little more serious and get Stone Joiner. And you guys just watched the finals game; you saw Stone Joiner did a lot of work in that game. So to say it was a good pickup would be a true statement. And yeah, that's sort of just all I really have to say about the bigger portion of my team. The one thing I left out was the G Max Charizard. Very good Pokemon. Uh, this was the first pick overall I had. 
I will say, and I know people are going to disagree with me here, is that the way I've been looking at this league, uh, going through it, and now that it's over, I still look at it this way. It's kind of like, not like an Ubers league, it's like a different type of league. Like, in Ubers league, let's say you have, let's say Garantina, for example. Garantina is going to be your best mod, but it's not going to be just broken compared to everything else because, you know, your opponent has an Uber and other ways to deal with things. Obviously, you know, we can talk about busted Ubers and saying, like, Zacian Crown. Like, that's going to be banned no matter what. But that's how i kind of been looking at GMAX leagues. It's like, yeah, GMAX is already, like, insane, but it's not just going to 6-0 every team ever because, A, well, GMAX is already dies to rock moves even if it is Gigantamax sometimes. So that was a little frustrating to prep with um, because the defensive capabilities, I mean, they were good in the playoffs, as you guys saw, but throughout the season, it was a little bit of a struggle there. Uh, not complaining because it's still an insanely busted mod, but it's not six owing teams like people sometimes make it out to be, if you know what I mean. And that's in GMAX League when everybody has one. There shouldn't be, unless your matchup is like dreadful, like in GMAX and Teleon like wrecked my team, but that was just on matchup. So that's why like GMAX Leagues are kind of in their own way. Like you can't really mix it with regular leagues, but when everyone has a GMAX, it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. Uh, but GMAX Art still, you know, insanely good. One of the best GMAXs. Offensively, fire and flying is just really hard to switch into. So, very good mod. It did the work for this team, and it was a good addition. That is the rundown I have for my team. Uh, yeah, it was a really good team. I was a really big fan of it. Uh, we're going to have some ending remarks. Uh, again, want to rethank uh, JB, Dorian, Shay, Mid, and, you know, the whole admin team for running this league very smoothly this was a very good community to be to be a part of this was one of the first communities that i've been a part of where no one's actually pissed me off at one point so very very good uh, i love this community we have uh having you know watching some fights and fight club and all that good stuff it really like had like a nice bonding experience and for that i'm you know very thankful for that uh but uh, our next upa season will we be a part of it the answer is probably yes i know that's probably going to start up loosely around when UPBA ends. Uh, will we be a part of it? Again, probably yes, but I'm not going to guarantee you guys anything until, you know, when we're closer to it. Speaking of UPBA, that is going to be the Wi-Fi League now on the main Wi-Fi League on the channel now that this is over. And maybe we'll join another one in the future. Who knows? Uh, it's not UPA or UPBA. We'll, we'll see. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Again, thank you guys for watching this UPA run. I, you know, love all of you so much. And I hope you guys stick around for the UPBA run that we have going on right now. So thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next video.